Welcome to the IP Showcase. My name is Thomas Edwards. I'm Vice President of Engineering and Development for Fox Networks Engineering and Operations. Uh, who's Fox Networks uh, Network Engineering and Operations? Uh, we're the folks that uh, basically distribute the Fox Broadcast Network and Cable Networks in the United States. I'm in an advanced technology role there where I study what technology is coming down the pike and help to advise the business which directions to go and perform uh, testing as well as proof of concepts on advanced technology uh, concepts. So uh, just a few years ago, all this IP stuff was way down the road. Advanced technology, we were doing proofs of concept, uh, we were showing it could work, and now this year at NAB, for the first time, the industry has really come together and shown in this great IP showcase that uh, they can interoperate together uh, with common standards. So this is really wonderful. Uh, I was asked to come up today and talk about why we really care about IP. Now IP has certain density advantages for specific uses such as in mobile production trucks. But the truth is in our network center, the real reason we are interested in IP is not IP. The real reason is the virtualization of our media processing. And there is no coaxial cable input on a virtual machine. Thus, IP is the on-ramp to virtualized media processing. So Fox has established uh, what we call the 2020 strategy for our business. And this is one where we're trying to uh, give uh, to our creative folks the ability to automate more processes, to enable self-service uh, so that our creatives don't have to go talk to engineers. And us as engineers, we can be the department of yes, you can do that, rather than the department of no, you've got to sit there and wait till we set this up and get going. Uh, we'd like to adopt object-based assembly downstream as far as possible in order to enable uh, greater regionalization and personalization of our content, especially as we begin to move from kind of traditional broadcasting to a more direct-to-consumer model. And of course, in order to do that efficiently, we have to have that automation portion working well and all of the different media elements uh, moving independently and being composable at the, uh, at the end so they can be distributed to the end user. So uh, the 2020 doesn't refer to a year, it refers to a vision, although it turns out the year and the vision are kind of beginning to co coalesce together and we'll probably hit it right on target. So you know, if we imagine just a few years from now what the Bro uh, Fox Broadcast Center would look like, we're imagining a data center not what a broadcast equipment center looks like today. We're imagining a data center that's flexible, multi-format, we can have HD, 4K, God forbid 8K, what have you, uh, running on commercially available off-the-shelf hardware systems, using software-based media processing rather than hardware processing, be virtualized so we can spin up and spin down our media processing capacity as needed, and also hybrid clouds, so we can move those virtual machines or containers between our on-prem data center and a public cloud where appropriate. So what really is the problem we're trying to solve? So you'll hear people talking about, well, we need to be flexible and agile. So flexible comes from the Latin flectere, meaning to bend, meaning we have to be able to change. Our industry is going through tremendous changes. Uh, already we have new competitors we've never seen before. Uh, who knows what's going to be happening in the next five or ten years. So we have to be able to change our entire business model around. And that means having a flexible plant which lets us do that. And agile comes from the Latin agere meaning do, meaning quick and well coordinated in movement. So we've got to be able to not only change things very, uh, change things, but change things very rapidly in order to meet this new competition. So flexible and agile and IP and virtualization get us there. So what this has led us to as an industry is a SMPTE 2110 standard. This isn't just taking SDI and pulling bits off of a cable and putting them in packets. This is splitting up our media into the audio, into the video and into the events such as closed captions or SCSI 35 triggers to be able to independently produce those. For instance, you might have a, uh, now a, a virtual machine that just spits out closed captions 
rather than spitting out SDI with closed captions in vertical ancillary data on a specific line, just putting out closed captions. You compose it together flexibly with your video and your audio. And if you'd like your German audio with that, you pick that up. If you want your French audio with that, you pick that up, et cetera. This ability to separately produce and separately compose these elements. And that's what Symphony 2110 gives the industry. So when I talk about virtualization, there are a lot of sub-elements that we could be talking about. You know, we're always talking about software-based solutions, but when we talk about virtualized solutions, we're talking about solutions which do not depend on individual physical hardware, but software-based solutions that can be created when needed, destroyed when needed, and moved if necessary. And that's what gives us the incredible flexibility of uh, virtualization. You've got on-prem or private cloud virtualization in your, in your data center, and that's both file-based and live processing. Again, those are all slightly different. And then you've got public cloud virtualization, again, both file-based processing and live processing as well. And it's interesting, this is all happening right now in slightly different ways. Uh, then the, all of these four different elements have you know, slightly different versions. I'm going to kind of concentrate on uh, private cloud live processes uh, because the file processes should be simple, right? And we're working those out as an industry. We're already doing both private and public cloud audio. We still have, okay. We're doing you know, private and public cloud uh, file-based processing right now. And we're just about getting into uh, private live and we're beginning to put our feet into public cloud live as well for uh, things like syndicated playout or uh, channels like movie channels that, that don't need much in the way of hard live processing. So, you know, if you want to do this yourself, you can go on Amazon Web Services and go to the AWS Marketplace and you can find a channel in a box. It'll uh, you know, give you a playlist. You can do a graphics insertion. Uh, you can do um, uh, Nielsen encoding and EAS and all of this. And it can be spun up you know, in about 10 to 15 minutes you're up and going. Uh, and it, by the way, it'll, you got a free, there's a free trial for one week if you want to for some of these, right? And it'll tell you exactly how much that's going to cost. You know, software by the hour, the Amazon EC2 by the hour, and the total by the hour. And this is kind of neat because this tells you exactly how much it's going to cost. Uh, so, you know, we fire this up, boom, boom, 20 minutes later, we've got, you know, video playing out. So this is what we can do on public cloud today. Uh, very easy, very simple. And we'd like to get to the point where we can do this uh, not with the compressed H.264 output of something on Amazon, but with the uncompressed output of SMPTE 2110 inside our, inside our private cloud. So virtualization uh, has a lot of different elements to it when you look at it. So this is an example of a virtual machine system. You've got a virtual machine one and virtual machine two. And they ride on top of a hypervisor. So the hypervisor is running on the real machine, the physical machine, that has physical cores of CPU. The physical cores of CPUs have the virtual CPUs from the virtual machines running on them. So a virtual machine's got tasks, it's got a scheduler, and the virtual CPUs, and then these virtual CPUs are scheduled onto the physical CPUs. So there are a lot of opportunities for contentions here between all these different elements. You could have tasks contending for the same virtual CPU. You could have virtual CPUs contending for physical CPUs. Uh, you can have virtual uh, VM memory, uh, can, uh, which is contending for real physical memory. You can have a sharing of the last level or level layer three cache on the physical CPU, um, as well as sharing network interface cards. And all these contentions can create unexpected latency. And that kills you in two ways because it means you have to have the buffer to handle that jitter. And the buffer means more latency. And if you have way too much jitter, it could actually potentially overflow buffers on ethernet switches if you have converging flows. So let me show you what the, some of the challenges are here. So this is the packet inner arrival time. So you've got a arrow of time coming along here and the packets will show up. And what we're doing is we're bringing three output ports uh, into a switch, and then that switch, they're all converging uh, to one output right there. So we've got three, imagine three packets come in all at the same time. 
and it's too much for the switch to handle. So it's got on-chip SRAM buffers. And in real switches we see today, generally about 100 kilobytes, or for 10 gigabit ethernet ports, it's about six uh, packets worth of, of buffer, for, sorry, 66 packets worth of buffer. So the three come in, they get buffered up because they can't all go out at the same time. And then it begins to drain out. We drain one packet out. We drain the second packet out. Next three packets come in, and again, they buffer up and drain out and drain out. And we're okay, you know. Next buffer is they drain out. So this is a nice cadence. You know, boom, boom, boom. Nice and even. One, two, three, four. Now, we start syncopating. That's where the problems come in. So here we've got three packets that come in, and they, yes, they, they drain out the same way, okay? And then we kind of expected the packets to show up here because obviously we have to have one frame every 59.94 da, 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 of a second for the US and one every 50th of a second for our European friends, right? Uh, if it doesn't show up there, you've got to make up that time somehow. So eventually here they do show up, and, but the problem is now we're way late. So now the next one's about to come in and show up. And so they'll, they'll buffer. Next one's come in and show up. And they'll buffer. And you know, if you try to do that one more time, boom, you've ran out of buffer. So that's a problem. So the challenge here is within, uh, especially with virtualized uh, software-based solutions, is to make sure that we have rules of the road about how good your cadence needs to be. It needs to be like one, two, three, four. It can't be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And SMPTE 2110 dash 21 is going to be the standard which will be the rules of the road for packet and arrival times to make sure that your, your switch doesn't blow up. So I'll give you an example. This is a FPGA-based SMPTE 2022-6 source. Uh, the, the FPGA is very regular. Almost, you know, the mean time is 7.4 microseconds between packets. Uh, the vast majority of them are at 7.4. And by the way, there are a couple which are here uh, but that's only because that's the last packet in a frame. So one out of every 1,000 packets or so, it comes a little bit faster, but the vast majority of them are right here at 7.4 microseconds between packets. And that looks good, and if we take a look and measure this over a long period of time, mean is 7.4, which is what we expect, max is 7.5, so just maybe a little bit more than the mean, and the minimum is at 2.7. So this is a very good cadence stream. It is, it's FPGA, we expect that. Now let's take it to the software realm. So this is a software-based 2022-6 player. Um, it's playing back you know, on regular on a Linux system, although it has kernel bypass, so it does a little bit better than the standard Linux uh, TCP IP stack. Uh, you'll see that we're spread out here in terms of packet and arrival times, maybe about 20 or 30 microseconds. But every now and then you get these things out here, you know, at, at hundreds of microseconds. And if we look over a long period of time, here looking over about an hour, we'll see our worst, you know, again, mean is still 7.4 microseconds. It's still getting out the packets when we need to on average, but the worst case time is one millisecond. So that's a fairly long time, right? It's not, it's not a huge part of a frame, but, you know, it's about you know, a little, little uh, under a tenth of a frame, right? So it's, uh, it's, you, can, you can probably deal with this. Now I'm going to show you what is a first generation virtualized software based solution. And again, completely anonymous. I'm not going to say who this vendor was. I appreciate you for sending me the software, but uh, this is probably not going to be optimal. Uh, so we've got this spread here of about 500 microseconds for most of the packets. And then you've got the outliers. And if we look again over a long period of time, again, the mean is still 7.4 microseconds. They're still getting them out there when they need to on average, but worst case, this is looking over a whole day, worst case is 12.6 microseconds, and that's like two-thirds of our 60p frame, right? Not good from a latency standpoint, and risky if you had hundreds of these going into an Ethernet switch and you're trying to you know, converge them, uh, you could run into real problems. So to try to begin evaluating some of these issues, Fox has started what we call the Virtualized Terrarium Project. And the same way the terrarium is an ecosystem with uh, plants and insects and soil, this is going to try to represent 
the virtualized broadcast ecosystem by bringing in things like play out channel a box, audio mixing, mass control switching, production switching, graphics insertion, watermarking, uh, to take a look at uncompressed, low latency live. Everything is IP, no SDI. Uh, and then try to identify the hardware requirements to make these virtualized solutions work. And also some of the tweaking. And if you go to VMware, they'll give you little tweaks to try to improve the uh, virtualized performance in terms of latency and to use little tricks like single root IO virtualization uh, for the network interface cards to make them more dependable as well. Uh, try to learn about the specific software solutions uh, over a long period of time, looking maybe over a whole week, looking for packet and arrival times, looking for any drop packets or any weirdness, and to try to do ad hoc interoperability testing uh, between these different uh, vendors sending us these virtualized solutions. So it is becoming a virtual world. You may have watched the, the Super Bowl on Fox Sports VR. Uh, and this is really where all the excitement is for us. Uh, not just to move to IP, not just to have the same workflow we ever had, like when we went from you know, tapes to files, we didn't just say, oh, well, a file is just another tape. This happens to be made out of bits. No, file-based workflows, very different from tape-based workflows. IP workflows will be very different from SCI workflows, and the virtualization of our media processing is going to be a major part of that change in workflows. And thank you.